Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Woman of the Photographs, a Japanese movie from 2020. Now the following plot synopsis was paraphrased from the website eyeforeyefilm.uk. Hideki Nagai plays Kai, a photographer who, like most in the business today, makes art on the side, whilst making his living taking and or photoshopping sappy portraits of customers keen to meet conventional beauty standards. Privately, he holds these customers in contempt, apparently unaware of the context in which their photographs are being used, that is, of their need to compete in a world where everyone else's pictures have been edited as well. Life is simpler for him, but that changes when he meets a woman named Kyoko, played by Itsuki Otaki. Now, the opening scene of this film does have a little bit of black humor to it. You know, a woman shows up, uh, at this guy's uh, office, and she gets her picture altered by our main character to the point where she refuses to even look at the original picture anymore. You know, her new self is now properly on display within the artificially altered image. And then after that, we're introduced to our protagonist's very basic everyday life. You know, he likes to take some walks, uh, grab some food, and he hangs out with his pet, a praying mantis insect. Now, after he meets the female lead, I was a little bit surprised at his indifference towards her. You know, at first he seems enamored by this woman when he initially sees her, but he's also rather annoyed by her presence and seems more passionate about his insect research and pictures. And she coerces him and pushes him to hang, hang out with her a bit, you know, and uh, things go from there. But the plot synopsis almost makes her seem like the weirdo. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this mysterious woman shows up. But it's really our main character who seemingly has no personality. I mean, this guy's very stiff. He doesn't talk, really. Um, some backstory about him is revealed later on, but the film primarily focuses on the man and the woman as they spend time together. But yeah, I found it interesting how I actually found the woman to be more, I guess, charismatic than the man. It's a bit difficult to review Woman of the Photographs, if only because... It's more of an art house flick than it is a mainstream crowd pleaser. You know, this isn't like if you threw this film out in 2,000 theaters in the United States, it would bomb at the box office and the reviews would be, you know, uh, all over the place, I think. But, you know, it doesn't have a lot of like super eventful moments or like high energy. And there is some repetition in, inve in events that are, uh, I guess, showcased here. So we get like multiple scenes inside this man's photo office where people are touching up their photos and he's helping them with his computer. There are multiple scenes of him feeding his little uh, praying mantis as well as scenes with the woman observing him doing these things. So you do need a little bit of patience with this one. But I did enjoy this movie for a few key reasons. Okay, first of all, it's a bit different from your typical film. It keeps you a bit off balance. And I was wondering where the story was going to go. I wasn't quite sure. Uh, there's a heavy emphasis on social media and using filters when posting photos of yourself online, even if it's non-representative of how you look in real life. <laughs> and the purpose of this, of course, is for these people to earn validation from people on the internet. And that's a huge topic nowadays, right? So I would say that this is the main theme of the film. There's, it's, it touches on it so much. So if you're interested in that, you know, this is a positive. Another theme emerges near the end, and uh, it could be interpreted as oddly romantic, uh, and I liked it. You know, it kind of, it, when the film ends, you might not catch it immediately, but uh, it's, it's there, and it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, performances are good, and the runtime is less than an hour and a half. So that, that helps as well. Even though some events are a little repetitious, it's a little bit on the slow side, deliberately pace side. Again, if, if the runtime was two and a half hours, I'd be having problems with this movie probably. But at under 90 minutes, it's a good, it's a good length. There's a slightly humorous vibe at times. It made the film feel a little bit lighter than I expected. Um, however, the tone does have a slightly darker angle at times during the second half when a certain psychological condition is revealed. Um, after that, there are a few scenes, just a few, that are slightly wince-worthy, um, but I can't really say exactly what they are without giving away the, uh, you know, the second half. But there's nothing crazy in this. You don't have to worry about it. Just, 
just know that this film is pretty, you know, consistent with its tone, but it has a little bit of humor at times and a little bit of darkness at times, okay? Uh, sound design is very accentuated at times. Like, you get loud chewing noises from the praying mantis and stuff like that. Uh, so, in summary, I would say that my assessment of Woman of the Photographs would be this. If the plot synopsis and the main theme that I, that I gave you sound interesting to you and you enjoy deliberately paced art house films, check it out. You know what I mean? It's, it's a good movie, I think. But if you're, if you're in the mood for a, a beer and popcorn fun movie or something like that, it's, you know, it's not going to tickle your fancy. And it's not like great enough for me to like tell everyone to watch it. You know what I mean? But it's a good flick. All right. It's currently streaming on Tubi and Amazon. So if you've seen it, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you next time.